Hi, I'm Micah Bell, and this is Deliverance Talk. I want to talk to you today about some things that were amazing to me when I discovered them after I began to walk in the Spirit, after I received the Holy Spirit into my life and in the ministry that the Lord has given me. We began to find that there were things that, uh, as we prayed about it, we couldn't find an answer where people were having problems in their home or maybe sleeping and other things like this. I talked a few weeks ago about uh, stuffed animals in children's rooms and there would be problems of them sleeping and crying or being terrorized until these things were removed. And that seems incredulous to uh, the natural mind, to the carnal mind. But there are things in the spirit that uh, the carnal mind will never understand. So we finally have to submit and say, Holy Spirit, show us these truths that we might be free. Some of you may be having a problem with some of this, but if so, uh, listen closely. I, I call this how to uh, invite a demon into your house or into your life. And we can do that through objects and other things that we bring into our homes. The pattern is uh, back in Deuteronomy 32 where God speaks to uh, Israel through Moses. Moses in his uh, last uh, really uh, teaching or song, they called it the Song of Moses, he talked about how they turned to idols. And what was happening there with idols was, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, what, what is it, 1 Corinthians 10, that the idol itself is nothing. But when a person has an object or something, that has been dedicated, it invites uh, uh, spirits, it invites a demon. And a lot of cultures are very much aware of this. I remember one time I was uh, ministering in Cherokee, North Carolina, and one of the things they did there on the reservation, they had a big place where they manufactured moccasins. And the Indian people there told me, the Cherokee Indian friend of mine said, yes, uh, the design patterns of the beads on the moccasins are to invite certain spirits to help in your walk, your warfare, or whatever you might be doing. And so this is spread out all over the country, and people, when they buy this, put it on don't, and don't realize what they're doing and what they're inviting into their lives. So uh, objects uh, of various forms uh, that, and, and the, the, the motivation for making these objects can certainly invite spirits into your life. I remember when I first came to uh, understand things spiritually, I'd carried around a carved wooden statue that I'd bought in Mexico years before. And for some reason, every time we would move to another house, I would take this thing, uh, kind of an ugly thing, and sit it on the mantel at the fireplace or put it in a prominent place in our home in the living room. And one day I was sitting there after I, I had received the Holy Spirit, and it's like the Holy Spirit said, see that thing over there? Get rid of it. And don't just get rid of it, burn it. So I took it out on my barbecue pit and, and burned and burned and burned. It, it was very difficult to burn, but I finally burned it up and something lifted in our home. And so I began to see these things. And so different objects, different things that we buy and so forth. We, we, I, some of you know about uh, bringing uh, lava rock home from Hawaii and how many people have sent that rock back from what is it, Kilo uh, Kilauea? the volcano Kilauea, that there's something that follows you home, and he's, ha, ah, you. Well, uh, a lot of people have scoffed at that and found out that that's really so. So uh, what does it do? It invites a spirit, a presence into your home, into your life. And these are the kinds of problems that I've seen with this. Uh, patterns in the house. Start having accidents in the house. Things where people are falling down, tripping or spilling or things and so forth. Uh, demons are able to do this in our lives. Well, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, well, when you bring something like that that has a, a, a contact with a spirit into your home, even though you're a Christian, uh, that doesn't mean that they don't have a legal right to do what they're going to do with that. So what's the answer? Well, I can pray. I can bind it. I, yeah, we can do cleansing through prayer. And, 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 you know, invoking the blood of Jesus into the situation. But more times than not, we just need to get rid of the thing. I have, we have a saying that something in your house like that, when in doubt, cast it out. 
I have one friend that used to be a millionaire that got rid of a million dollars worth of artwork and so forth because he saw that it was demonically inspired. And a lot of artwork is. They call it the muse of art or whatever. And, and inviting these things into our home and not realizing what it's doing within our home. Heaviness in our home or whatever. Uh, a darkness or whatever. You go in homes uh, that is full of old antiques and, and the mustiness and, the, and so forth. And you say, what is this? Well, <laughs> it's spirits. Uh, sometimes they move objects in our home. We, we know about that. We've seen that happen. And, and people wonder why. Doors closing, sounds. Well, what's, uh, how can I have this in my home? Well, more times than not, it's something that you brought into your house or into your home uh, that it has given that thing a legal right to follow with it. And it's like an idol. No, you don't bow down and worship the thing. Certainly not. But uh, an idol is something that uh, has a spirit with it. And so people would form these things to invite spirits, and they'd do a ritual, and here comes the spirit. And, and they wanted that because they thought that that spirit could some way help them. And that, that's the pattern of idolatry. And that's what Israel got into, and that's what Paul warned the Christians there in Corinth about. Hey, uh, don't provoke God to jealousy, he says there in, in, in 1 Corinthians. And he says, because of that, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And, and maybe not even know what they're doing. But anyway, we'll not go into detail about that. In fact, I have a book that I've written called No Other Gods. And right here it is. And I'm going to make it available on the website uh, here that you can order this book and uh, go through it. Because uh, I've, I've tried to uh, compile uh, as much as I could from the past of my experiences with these kinds of things. And I think this is very significant that this is coming right before Halloween this year, uh, where there's a lot of things that are demonic, that invite demonic activity into our lives uh, with the Halloween thing. But uh, maybe we'll talk more about that the next time. So they move objects. And a big thing that I found when you bring objects, when somebody tells me they're having trouble sleeping, when a Christian says, I, I just can't sleep, I, I, the first thing that comes to mind is, hey, there must be something in their bedroom or in their house, mostly in the bedroom, where they can't sleep. It's, it's affecting them. You say, no, I have found all kinds of things, certain books. And if you remember in Acts 19, they burned the books, thousands of dollars worth of books. Why? Because books on witchcraft, books on murder, books on these things will invite spirits. And that's how some of these books are bestsellers, because there's a spirit involved and and Satan likes to spread this kind of thing. And it gives uh, the, the spirits, the unclean spirits, rights to, to follow people home with the book. Huh. So uh, I, I know, knew a lady one time that she couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep. That was in our ministry years ago. And I said, look for her in your bedroom. And she kept looking. I can't find anything. I can't find anything. But well, finally one night she got up and looked in her jewelry box. And down in the bottom of the jewelry box was a Maltese cross that uh, her mother or somebody had given her. And uh, uh, she said, this is, there's something wrong here. So she took it out and took it to her husband and they broke it open. And where the break was, it looked like the little heads of demons on, e on the uh, part of that cross. I saw it. They brought it to show it to me before they destroyed it. And so she was then able to sleep. I know this seems incredulous. Books, CDs, records, jewelry, images, uh, objects uh, of furniture. We had a, a family one time that had, had been in Japan, and they, they brought all this uh, furniture home with dragons and so forth on it, and their house they were having problems in. And, and they asked me and another brother to come over to their house and pray because they were having so many problems. And... They were feeling something was wrong, and so we went and walked in there, and there was all this stuff with dragon heads on it and so forth. And we said, you've got to get rid of this. And they said, oh, we can't do that. It's, it's too valuable. Well, it's your choice. But I can tell you from experience, uh, experience after experience after experience, uh, that this is true. It's true in my life. And it took me years after I really turned to the Lord to really get 
free of a lot of things. Sometimes certain photographs. There was a lady uh, that Frank and Ida Hammond were praying for, and she kept uh, hearing a knocking in her house, knocking. She couldn't figure out what it was. Well, come to find out, she had a picture. If you've seen that classic picture of Jesus standing at a door, knocking on the door, and they take this out of the book of Revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And, and so she took, uh, they said, take this picture out or get rid of it. <laughs> a picture of Jesus? Well, who has a picture of Jesus? Who, you know, come on. Anyway, she took it out and put it in the shed out in the back. And, and so she went out one day to hang clothes on her clothesline out there. And she heard the knocking in the shed and finally got rid of the thing. Because it was inviting a demon, some kind of religious spirit, I guess. I don't know. But this is, this is real, folks. This is real. The spirit realm is real. And the spirit realm can affect us. And they can do these things. And uh, I, I, I can't even make a list long enough. So I would simply say, if, if you've got an issue, pray about this and so forth. And then uh, you're welcome to order this little book where I cover uh, these kinds of things. And in detail, not from theology, but from experience of walking in the, in the Spirit, which we're all called to do as believers. So I bring this to you in hopes that it will help somebody. And that's what these little deliverance talks are all about. So I hope, again, that uh, uh, it will be a help to you. I'm Michael Bell. This is Deliverance Talk.